The following program may contain subject matter and language suitable for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. And welcome to yet another edition of The Meltdown. Uh, my name is Norm. And my name is Jeff. And today we're asking you to freeze because it's the law. And we're going to be taking a, a look at all kinds of legal things. Um, so we're going to do that in our fun facts. Of course, Lou Saracino's here for another Meltdown Minute. And then for our stupid stupidness, um, well, we're going to look at some weird laws that okay. exist so i think we're going to have fun with that so let's uh jeff do you want to uh introduce <laughs> the first go right go for it jeff here we go with our meltdown fun facts all right so what we're going to be taking a look at in our meltdown fun facts is what americans need to know before visiting canada hmm. so there are several things that you know uh Customs wants to make sure that you understand if you're an American before you come to the border. Uh, number one, first and foremost, you must have a passport. Mm. All U.S. citizens arriving in Canada must have a valid passport or passport equivalent, such as an enhanced driver's license or Nexus card. Gone are the days of casual cross-border visits with only a driver's license. Those disappeared after 9-11. There's some leniency when it comes to children coming to Canada. Travelers 15 or younger need only present a birth certificate or certified copy to the border. Hmm. So there you go. So if you're an American watching this show, please pay, pay close attention to these facts. Otherwise, well... You're going to be turned away. Yeah, we won't see you. No, and and we want to see you. And we do. We want you to enjoy our lovely country. Welcome to Canada. Because it's a better country than yours. <laughs> I mean, it's... Uh, uh, Come on over and visit. <laughs> uh, number two, you can bring Fido, but not fresh fruit. Hmm. You can bring your pet with proper documentation, but fresh fruit is a no-no. Take advantage of shopping for duty-free liquor and cigarettes at the duty-free stores, but you can only buy limited amounts. Of course, as travelers, we know that, right? Yeah. It's the same thing. We go to the States for 24 hours. You're allowed very little mm -hmm. go for a bit longer and we, we can bring the whole country back i've heard that about fresh fruit have you yeah, yeah. Well, you know why yeah. um no actually i don't know why it's because there there might be bugs oh, okay. on the fruit that will mm, that makes sense come and infect our crops yeah. and stuff and we're All not right. gonna let you do that to us here's another fun <laughs> fact that americans need to know before coming to canada your u.s driver's license is valid your U.S. driver's license is perfectly transferable to driving in Canada. However, you'll need to learn some of the other laws and conditions. Speed limits are different in Canada and posted in metrics, so kilometers, not miles, are used to indicate maximum speeds in any given area. Distracted driving laws are in effect in all Canadian provinces and territories, which means cell phones must be used hands-free when driving. Canada also makes it a no-no to smoke in a car hmm. if you have a minor. Wow, that's I, right. Now, I, not a, now, not if you're if you're driving your friend to work, you know, who works in the mines. <laughs> that's not the same thing. Yeah. I mean, he, you can smoke all you want, but if you have a minor, which yeah. is a child under sixteen, I guess it is, mm -hmm. then that's the thing you can't do. You know, we want to make sure that we we explain it perfectly well. Yes, exactly. Minors, yes. Minors, <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what if your child is a minor but has wearing a minor's cap? Well, the there, you just don't do it. Don't take the chance because that's a double minor. Uh, yes. <laughs> now we're into hockey. Yes, we are. Uh, okay, here's another thing Americans need to know before they come to Canada. U.S. currency is not accepted everywhere. Though many border towns and large metropolitan areas will accept U.S. currency, it is not widely accepted in other parts of Canada. 
like smaller or more remote towns where they only deal in Canadian currency. Tourist attractions and major malls will probably give you a reasonable exchange rate, while other businesses may just accept U.S. currency at par. And of course, you know, when, when, when we go to the States, I think it benefits us when they take it at par, but the other way around, I don't think it does. I think it's, it's, a, it's not good. Yeah. So, you know, buy some Canadian money. Don't be so damn cheap. If you're going to come mm -hmm. to our country, buy some damn Canadian money and, uh, and spend it and uh, beef up the economy <laughs> so that all of us have work to do. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, another fact Americans need to know before coming to Canada, you could get dinged with cell phone roaming charges. Same thing, regardless mm -hmm. which way you go. Yeah. Your U.S. cell phone will mm -hmm. work in Canada, mm -hmm. but the charges will be astronomical if you don't let your carrier know you are heading out of the country and have them work out a texting and calling package for you while you're away. If you don't set up a special plan, turn off your cellular data in your settings and only download email when you're hooked up to Wi-Fi. That's just good <laughs> advice for anybody going anywhere. Unless you want to spend a lot of money. Uh, yes, if you like spending money, then just don't worry about it. Uh, another thing Americans need to know before coming to Canada, you could be denied entry. Canadian Border Services Agency guards can get sticky when it comes to criminal records or suspicious behavior. You should be aware of what can get you denied entry. That includes DUIs and improper identification or papers if you're traveling with minors who are not your own. Yeah, I think that's pretty self-explanatory, right? Like you should never try to, you know, if, if you've got some shit going on and you know it's bad and that they're going to find out that's probably just not a good idea, yeah. then you just stay home. Yeah, just be well prepared. Yeah. Again with the minors though, eh? <laughs> now if you're American and you have minors in your car, but you're not in Canada, maybe, maybe you could smoke, I don't know. <laughs> uh, here's another important thing Americans need to know. You still need health insurance. Uh, Canada does have an excellent universal health care system, but only for Canadians. If you are visiting Canada, you might want to get travel health insurance coverage during your stay unless your health insurance provider covers you outside the U.S. Something else uh, legally that Americans need to know is that the legal drinking age is 18 or 19. Now, actually, that's kind of funny because it's like we can't make up our mind. Oh, you know, it's either 18 or 19, whatever. I mean, if you look 19, half. yeah, 18 and a half is the perfect drinking age. But, of course, it varies from province to province. It may be 21 in the USA, but make your way north and the legal drinking age goes down to 18 or 19 in Canada, depending on the province. The drinking age also applies to the ability to buy liquor and beer, which in most parts of Canada is at specially designated liquor and beer stores, not in grocery or convenience stores. And of course, that's changed mm -hmm. since uh, they've now let some grocery stores yeah. carry um, alcohol in, in Ontario. So and actually cool. smaller, uh, like in Metcalf, the village of Metcalf, North Goer, you can yeah. actually buy beer and other alcoholic beverages um, um, as if it's an LCBO. Yeah, but it does have to be a separate cash. Right. Okay, pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, here's uh, the last thing that is listed on this list. The last thing that if you're an American, you're coming to Canada, this you need to know, okay? The taxes might surprise you. They don't surprise us anymore. <laughs> We're just, they just piss us off, but they might surprise you. Your restaurant or hotel bill might surprise you if you don't know that Canada adds a federal sales tax on all goods and services. Most other provinces also have their own tax which means depending on where you are in Canada, your bill could have up to an additional 15% tacked on. The tax refund program for visitors to Canada was dropped in 2007, so the taxes you pay while you're in Canada stay in Canada. So there you go. I hope that helped. Uh, all of you Americans that are watching the show or just planning to hop into your car <laughs> just now, and you're probably sitting there going, uh, you know what, maybe not. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll wait till next year. Wise choice. Yeah. Uh, that's it for our Meltdown Fun Facts. And now it's time for... A Meltdown Minute with Lou. This was a show on the law. Being Italian, I had my own experiences with the law. Here's my point. You ever notice how many expressions revolve around law? Johnny Law, Long Arm of the Law, LA Law. Law and order, probably just the first two. Probably just the first two apply. My point is that there are plenty of laws on the books that make no sense 
whatsoever. Did you know that there's a bagpipe law? You can only play bagpipe until 10 o'clock. Here's what's amazing to me about that. How did you wait until 10 to listen to that? It's like somebody's punching a cat. It's not enjoyable. Did you also know that it's a law that you can't exit a plane in midair? Here's what's fascinating. That happened enough times where they actually had to make a law to stop it. Like there were people in the middle of a flight going, you know what, fuck this. I don't understand that at all. Here's the weirdest one. It's illegal to drag a dead horse down the street in Toronto. I don't understand that that was an issue, apparently. Was there a city council meeting where they were like, listen, this has got to stop. <laughs> there, are, there are way too many dead horses being pulled down young. I don't, it's the, it's the saddest parade <laughs> I've ever seen. Thank you, Lou. And now it's time for Meltdown Stupid Stupidness. So we're going to have some fun now with some strange laws you didn't know existed in Canada. And actually, there might be one or two that you did know. Uh, but let's see. Lawmakers in Etobicoke, Ontario, are big believers in bathtub safety. So mm. much so that a local bylaw states that a bathtub should not be filled with more than three and a half inches of water. Hmm. Yeah. So it's a bylaw, which means that if someone reports you or says, hey, my mom's <laughs> taking a bath and the thing's almost running over, uh, the bylaw will come into your house and write you a ticket. That's how serious that is. And it was written in inches, so it was written in days uh, when Canada had the imperial system. That's right. That's how old that law is. And imperial margarine. Imperial margarine. You don't see that. It's all base cell now. Yeah, you're right. Uh, here's another one. Surrey PEI boasts a law making it illegal to build a snowman that is higher than 30 inches, <laughs> which is two and a half feet tall. So if your snowman is too high, you will get a fine. Uh, I was wondering why when I was there, people had tape measures with, with their snowman. I couldn't figure really, out. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm making that up. I wasn't. I know. I didn't. I didn't never, you don't even know where it is. I've been to PEI once and it was the summertime. So Here's one you might know. Okay. Okay. If you live in Canada, Ontario... Feel free to paint your garage door any color you want, except purple. That's <laughs> against the law, and you will be fine. Yeah, too many people are freaking out. <laughs> purple garage door. I know. Man. I remember. I remember when that law passed, and that really? was. Uh, oh yeah, that was. It, it 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 fell under the category of you know why bother? Yeah. But I guess they want to make sure in Canada that there's no purple. I remember that there was. I don't know if it's still a bylaw in Canada, but. Uh, um, at one time you couldn't have like clotheslines and things like that yeah. in your backyard. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, that may, that may be. I know that is, that is an effect in some places. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about Canada. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. A typical childhood pastime in the rest of Canada has been outlawed in Oshawa, Ontario, where it's illegal to climb a tree. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. It's awful. Uh, here's another one. The town of Uxbridge, Ontario, has strict limits regarding internet speed. In fact, a local law limits internet speed to 56K. <laughs> Anything faster and you're a criminal. Wow. Yeah. How about that? How about that? Yeah. Uxbridge. Like do that. not move. To, I could never live in Uxbridge. I couldn't do any, yeah. any business, yeah. any work. <laughs> uh, here's another one. Having a home with more than two different colors of paint will earn you a fine if you live in Beaconsfield, Quebec. Wow. Two colors. Next they time. prefer, in fact, if you just have one. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I guess that's but two is That's it. That two's the limit, damn it. Well, next time I go through Beaconsfield, I'm going to be thinking about that. Yeah. You know, and thinking, okay, that house there, I wonder if they only have one one color paint in their house. You have to wonder. Yeah, I'll be just wondering. Look. No, no, this is the outside of the oh, house. Oh, outside. Yeah. Well, there you go. It'd be much easier. <laughs> they don't give a shit what you do on the inside. You can have 18 colors. Yeah, you can have a purple it's if the you outside. want. <laughs> Why would there be a law saying what you oh. can't do on the inside of your own mm. home? Oh. That's weird. Jeff, get on, get on the ball, man. I just didn't, I just didn't hear the Wake inside. up, Jeff. I didn't hear the inside outside part. <laughs> well, there was no outside part. Just one has to oh. assume. Oh, okay. That it's it's kind of like purple garage doors. It's not inside the garage door. It's outside that other oh. people can see. Oh, that makes Think sense. of the public, Jeff. Once again, I'm yeah. Peter Turk of the Meltdown. All right, here's another <laughs> bit of stupid stupidness, another strange law that you didn't know existed. In the Victoria neighborhood of Oak Bay, mm -hmm. a noisy parrot that talks too loudly could result in a $100 fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. And uh, now that is, is inside your house. <laughs> if the parrot's inside, right. but okay. people on the outside can hear it, it's a problem. I see. Here's okay. another one. Anyone who's ever tried to get rid of some change at the checkout counter had best know the rules. The federal government website notes that the limit is $25 if you're paying with loonies, hmm. $5 if you're using nickels, 
And if you're trying to get rid of pennies, the maximum legal amount per purchase is a mere 25 cents. Uh, yes, you have something to say? Oh, I'm just going to say, sometimes I, uh, you know, if I've got a lot of loonies and toonies, I'll go to the gas station and, you know, like, get $10 worth of gas with five toonies or whatever. That's a good way to get rid of your smaller change. Yeah. See, um, I don't do that. I save those things for Tim Hortons. Oh, well, okay. That makes sense as well. Got to help the economy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, here's another one. The Canadian Criminal Code contains a statute declaring it illegal to scare the queen. <laughs> And yes, sneaking up behind her and saying boo would count. Yeah, but it's so tempting whenever she's passing I by. I know, you just want to go, oh God, yeah. She's like, oh, Jeff Lefebvre, once again. Oh, Thank once you. again. <laughs> you naughty, naughty boy. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that law, by the way, resulted because apparently someone many, many, many years ago, um, I don't know, said either had a, a weapon or said they had a weapon in, in front of her and it shocked her and whatever. Yeah. So they actually passed a law saying you can't, you can't scare yeah. her. So don't, don't have a concealed weapon yeah. when you're hanging out. Do the not queen. scare the queen. That seems to make sense. Yeah, you can make her laugh. <laughs> yeah. you can make her think, but you can't scare her. <laughs> Here's another one. A Halifax bylaw requires cab drivers to wear a shirt or military type blouse with a collar and sleeves along with ankle length trousers or dress shorts, <laughs> which are worn within at least three inches of the knee. But it, the law also states that they are not allowed to wear t-shirts. Yeah. And you can, re you can report a cab driver who's wearing a t-shirt and they will be fined. I wouldn't do that. I no. wouldn't even report them if they were shirtless, although I'm glad that most cab drivers that uh, are driving me around definitely at least have a t-shirt on, you know. Yeah, you know. the regular cab drivers that drive you around will have <laughs> shirts. I rarely take cabs, actually. Right. I drive, drive myself everywhere, and I, I always, always have a shirt when I'm driving. <laughs> Just, it doesn't matter if you have one. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying, I, <laughs> even with the hot weather we've had this summer, I still And by the way, I, uh, Jeff goes into so much detail. I also wear underwear. I always, always, I never go out without wearing underwear. Uh, sometimes I wear two pairs because I have a problem now. <laughs> oh, sometimes you gotta keep the boys in check. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of check, check please. Can we? Is this show done? Uh, I got a few more to go here. <laughs> Let's try to get back to <laughs> the legalities of everything. Um, another strange law you didn't know existed. It's illegal to whistle in Petrolia, Ontario, between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. So keep your lips zipped. <laughs> Apparently, this weird law is part of an anti-noise bylaw that prohibits yelling, shouting, hooting, whistling, or singing during the wee hours. So. That's what I do all my hooting and whistling is between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. Right, when you're driving your car around shirtless. That's right. Look at me, I'm pretty. Break, breaking into people's houses to see how many different colors they paint their house. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm obsessed with that. <laughs> you got you got some problems. <laughs> okay, here's another one. Dressing up like a witch for Halloween? It's perfectly legal. Now, pretending to be a witch and passing yourself off as one when you are actually aren't, however, that's breaking the law, according to the Canadian Criminal Code. So, yeah, you can dress up like a witch, but you can't tell someone, I'm a witch and I'm going to put a hex on you, because you can be arrested for that. Wow. Anyway... That's a fun one. Uh, here's another one. According to Alberta's health and safety code, it is against the law to paint a wooden ladder. Now, the reason, this is kind of a one I, I understand, is to avoid disguising the condition of a shoddy ladder that's been made to look new, yeah. thanks to a coat of paint. But the fact that that's actually illegal, that's the part, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's, it's, it's common sense. You shouldn't do that to cover up the yeah. age of the ladder, but illegal? Hmm. Oh, well. It's good to just buy a new ladder. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Problem solved. <laughs> here's another one. If you find yourself in Alberta and are suddenly overcome with the urge to set fire to someone's wooden leg, don't. <laughs> Not only is it a you pretty... You pain over it, though. <laughs> Not only is it a pretty creepy thing to do, it's also yeah. against the law and will no <laughs> doubt land you behind bars. Well, good for you. Okay. If you're gonna create, if you're gonna be that, if you're gonna, ugh, if you're gonna misbehave like that, then you know yeah. you deserve to be <laughs> so, punished. <laughs> so, so there. I don't know how many of you have been sitting there, maybe at a restaurant, an outdoor cafe, and thinking to yourself, "That guy, that guy over there's got a wooden leg. 
Ah, uh, yeah. You know, the first thing you think to yourself, right? A normal person would think, I wonder how he got that. You know, did he, was he in the military? Did he lose it? Did somehow was it a disease that took it? But if you're sitting there thinking either of these two things, boy, I'd really like to paint that wooden leg <laughs> or boy, I'd really like to set fire to that. Then there's a much larger problem <laughs> than the law, but it is illegal. Well, good. to set someone's wooden leg on fire uh, in Alberta, let's just make make sure that everybody. <laughs> oh, knows on Ontario, that. we can do whatever. Oh yeah, we want. Ontario, you can set them on fire. You can paint them. You can do whatever you want. And multiple, no moral compass in Ontario. Multiple colors too. <laughs> uh, now, here's the last one, and and this I didn't know this was against the law uh, in our sister city, Montreal. Um, it's actually against the law to place a for sale sign in the window of your car while it's moving. Oh. So, you know, you see them all the time on mm -hmm. in people's driveways with yeah. for sale. Okay, no problem. But if you left the sign in your car in Montreal, got in and drove to the store, you could actually get fined uh, or arrested or possibly even killed yeah. uh, for doing something so heinous as putting a leaving your for sale sign in the car while the car is in motion. Mm. So anyway, that's a look at some crazy, ridiculous laws. Um, uh, next week, we are going to be looking at, uh, well, I wouldn't call them laws, uh, but they sort of become that way within cultures and families. We're going to be looking at traditions, so things that have been done for years. Uh, some of them are kind of interesting. Some of them are kind of creepy, uh, but we're going to look at all of them. So until next week, we'll see ya. See you later.